Okay, so Spyro the Dragon was a pretty huge hit when it came out, but now we're here to take a look at... Oh, so much goodness. Spyro 2, Ripto's Rage, also known as Gateway to Glimmer, where I live. You know what I mean. After the success of the first Spyro game, of course Insomniac had the idea to make a second game. But we all know that making a sequel to the first game is always a challenge. And for Insomniac, that's exactly what they did. They wanted to make a sequel, but they made it even better. Spyro 2 was released just one year after the first one. That's a really good job done, guys. And there is a lot to talk about in this game. There's so many stuff that's been changed in this game, I don't even know where to begin. Well, I suppose we should probably begin with the story. This game takes place after the events of Spyro 1. In the world of Avalar, there are these three creatures known as Hunter, Alora, and the Professor. The three accidentally activate a portal, and three Norks come in, Crush, Gulp, and the main antagonist of the game, Ripto. He wants to take over the land and be the new king. They soon realize that Ripto may have a somewhat hatred for dragons. Speaking of dragons, Spyro is seen, and unfortunately, he's dealing with some hard we weather. That is until he sees a portal to Dragon Shores. He hops in, but of course, it takes him to Avalar, where Spyro must now collect as many talismans as orbs as he can to try and defeat Ripto and save Avalar once and for all. If you ask me, the story is much more engaging than the first game. There's just more to do in this game, and there's actually some more cutscenes in this game that makes the story much more engaging to play through, and I just love to see what would happen. So yeah, the story is really, really good this time around. But let's talk about some of the changes made from the first to sp the second game. Obviously, Spyro's controls are still there, but they have been improved upon exponentially well. Spyro controls much more tight than before. One of the biggest examples of this is that Spyro can now jump jump higher while charging. It's true that he could do it in the first game, but he couldn't do it exactly that high enough. It was more like for just leaping off gaps and gliding to the place without having to do the normal jump anyway. Spyro can now jump much higher than charges during before, and I think that makes things much more easier and faster to travel to different areas. Levels also now have different characters to talk to. They'll either give you a mission or just tell you some interesting facts like the first game. Apart from Spyro's different controls, he also gets a brand new ability, Hovering. Hovering gives Spyro a little more air time to try and reach platforms that he otherwise couldn't reach. Or you could just do it with a charge and jump, you know, because, you know, the controls are so much tighter than last time. Unlike the first Spyro game, these levels are much larger and bigger than before, obviously because there's more things to do. One of the biggest additions in Spyro 2 were the mini-games. There's different mini-games depending on what type of level it is. There's several mini-games within each level, and when you complete these mini-games, you get orbs. You'll need to collect these orbs in order to progress through the game and eventually get to the 100% completion. One thing I completely forgot to talk about in the last game was speedways. The speedways in this game are fun. So were they in the first game. The speedways in this game except have more things to do. There's also a challenge you can do within each speedway, and it makes things much more challenging than last time before. Also, remember when Spyro 1 was too easy? Well, not really this time. There's more things to do, and while I do think there are some times where the game gets frustrating, the game is overall more challenging than the first game. Plus, the gem finding is completely different than the previous game. I know it's still the same thing, but now comes a different feature. If you hold down all four of the shoulder buttons, sparks will point to the direction of the nearest gem. This helped me so, so many times, and it's a huge relaxation after what the first game had. The boss fights have also improved. Unlike the first game, which had about five to six bosses, this game instead has three, but I'd rather take these bosses over the ones from Spyro 1. Each boss fight takes place in these huge arenas, and what I like is that it makes things very challenging. You don't exactly know how to defeat these bosses, and once you do, it makes things more challenging. Yeah, you don't have to hit them three times in a row and do the same thing over and over. Sometimes it can change, and there's new things for you to use, and I think that is really, really well done achievement. And Ripto was probably the best boss fight in the entire game, using different colored orbs as power-ups to defeat Ripto, and then finishing it off with flying through the air and melting the bastard in lava. Oh, it's so satisfying. Unlike the first game though, again, this game only has three hub worlds, but these hub worlds are so big to explore, there's still a lot of things to do, and the music. Oh my god. The music in these hub worlds is excellent. I love the soundtrack in this game. While it may not be as good as Spyro 1's soundtrack, I still think it's very, very good to listen to. Besides, Spyro has always had great music, and it's always fun to listen to in this game. 
apart from hovering though, Spyro also gets brand new abilities. There's swimming, there's climbing, and there's head bashing. Though to get these, you'll have to pay this really big fat bear named Moneybags with a few gems. Yes, this time gems are actually worth buying, because if you want to get through these areas or unlock new abilities, you'll have to collect these gems and pay Moneybags. And Moneybags is such a douchebag in this game. Well, okay, not as bad as in Spyro 3, but hey, at least you can't help but laugh at that face. Different controls that Spyro has is very, very easy to use. For one, I thought the swimming controls in this game were going to control like crap, but honestly, they nailed it down really, really well. Spyro doesn't swim like anybody else would. He swims like how a dragon would probably swim underwater. The swimming is very tight, and this is probably the best swimming controls I've ever seen in any video game, period. The main collectibles in this game are orbs, like we just said before, but in the first two worlds you'll need to collect talismans. Collecting talismans is obviously very easy, you just need to complete the level and boom, you're done. Like we said before, there's also mini games to do. There's about two to three mini games in each level, and each of them offer different power-ups. In each level, there's also these power-ups, which you'll need to use if you're going to complete some mini games in this game. In order to activate these power-ups, you'll need to defeat a certain number of enemies. Power-ups can range from flying, to super flame, to supercharged, to ice, to just so many different power-ups that you can use in this game. And even the supercharge, which returns from Spyro 1. Everything that Spyro 1 did was carried onto this game and it was improved exponentially fantastically well. Spyro 2 is my favorite game in the entire series and is one of my favorite PS1 games of all time. It did some things that the first game did and it made them even better. Overall, Spyro 2 Ripto's Rage gets a 9 out of 10. It's an outstanding achievement and an outstanding a sequel to a really, really great game. If you've got some time on your hands and see a copy of this game, be sure to pick it up. Trust me, it's worth all your money. But Spyro wasn't done yet. There was still one last game in the original trilogy, Spyro 3 Year of the Dragon. We'll be taking a look at that game next time.